Welcome to Today in Rocket Science, I'm Adam Malkin, and this month it actually is rocket science as NASA celebrates reaching a milestone that marks the beginning of a new era of space travel. More on that in a minute, but first. NASA scientists aren't the only ones setting their eye on the sky. A little closer to Earth, students competing in a self-built drone competition are zooming towards a career in aerospace. Students in Texas are getting the basics of creative engineering and learning a bit of how to put the pedal to the metal in designing a car. And even the president is getting involved in STEM. He hosted some young coders at the White House and wrote his first line of code. All that and more in this episode of It Ain't Rocket Science, all part of Time Warner Cable's Connect a Million Minds initiative to get you educated and interested in science, technology, engineering, and math. Now, back to our top story. NASA hit a major milestone this month, a successful trip for its Orion capsule. It's the first step on a journey humans have never embarked on before, a mission to Mars. The space agency tested a new rocket and its most important cargo, the capsule that will carry up to four astronauts on a journey unlike any other this nation has undertaken, an interplanetary voyage to the red planet, Mars. There are a host of questions to be answered through these trials. One in particular is the Orion capsule's ability to re-enter Earth's orbit. So, scientists and engineers at NASA had the unmanned capsule fly over 3,500 miles away from Earth, circling our planet twice for over four hours before re-entering the atmosphere at a screaming 20,000 miles per hour. Smashing into the Earth's atmosphere at such great speed superheats the air in front of Orion because the molecules don't have enough time to move out of the way, becoming compressed. This means Orion's heat shield needs to be able to withstand temps of over 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Before dropping into the ocean at just 20 miles per hour, the intrepid little spacecraft met every challenge, resulting in a total mission success. The next step in Orion's journey comes in 2018, when it will be sent on a week-long journey around the moon. After that, it'll be ready for its first test flights with a crew on board. And flight technology isn't just expanding the universe. Here on Earth, a new area of advancement and a hot-button political issue has unmanned aircrafts assisting farmers in crop management, while many companies are at the ready to deliver everything from prescriptions to pizza. We dropped in at a recent competition where students with an eye to the future and perhaps a future career were designing their drone-like prototypes. Montreal served as a backdrop for a recent student engineering contest. This is the um, annual student design competition for the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. And this year it was to simulate a hypothetical firefighting mission. And so the idea is you go through two stationary gates, you drop a payload on a target which would simulate a water drop on a fire, and you return to the starting point. The competition consisted of 18 teams from all over the world, including China, Peru, and Turkey. But of course, there can only be one winner. And this year's first place winner is the University of North Dakota. Organizers say the purpose of the yearly competition isn't just to pick a winner, but to bring like-minded students' enthusiasm about STEM together with experts in their respective fields. And above all, let them do the math. Each motor at peak voltage generates 10,000 RPM for a total of 120,000 RPM. So we designed it such that we wanted to get the most lift out of the drone, and basically we used 13-inch props to get that optimum amount. Of course, the day wasn't without its challenges. The only problem was with adding weight like this is because the actual like bucket itself doesn't actually flushly fit against the base of the quadcopter, so it rattles a lot and it messes up the controls and when you actually fly it'll, it'll oscillate, which causes problem when you're actually trying to fly it. Even though they didn't win when it came to fly, the Texas Tech drone definitely held its own. In New York, students are taking part in another kind of competition, this one a little more open-ended. Our Tara Lynn Wagner checks out the thinks young inventors at the Cooper Union have thought up. It's a six-week intensive program for students just entering college. I really just like the hands-on aspect 
that I haven't gotten throughout my high school experience or any experience before this. The Cooper Union Invention Factory is an opportunity for students to break the monotony of classroom lectures and spend every day working towards the completion of an original invention. And while many of them are taking part for fun, there are also other benefits, like a cash prize for best invention and the opportunity to pitch their creations to Quirky, an invention company. Coming up with an idea from scratch wasn't easy. We had to scramble over the weekend to figure out a new idea. Um, and Snippet was essentially born of a moment of frustration. Why not have a tape dispenser that attaches directly to the tape roll? And everyone around me was like, that's a good idea. Once the idea is hatched, it's on to the engineering aspect of inventing. Students say it's a chance to put what they learn in the classroom into action. It's rewarding to see just equations, I guess, actually become something tangible rather than just lead on paper and it's rewarding seeing all your work come into fruition, not because of a number or like a test score. Last year there was a, a student who was a terrific builder and she had been a co-check person for three years and she worked at a number of hotels and restaurants and she said it's just a terrible system. People lose their coat checks and people, the coat room gets all packed with coats and nobody can find the coat and so she invented an electronic system so it's two seconds to locate somebody's coat in a crowded coat check room. So it was sort of a pain point in her own life, and she came up with a very creative solution for it. The students will present their inventions to Quirky in March. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Tara Lynn Wagner. All right, we have to stop for a quick break, but coming up. It's computer science in the Capitol. We head to the White House for the kickoff of Computer Science Education Week, where even the president tried his hand at coding. In Austin, Eighth grade girls are doing their part to even the STEM gender playing field, learning the basics of creative engineering and taking a crack at designing their own miniature cars. And later, we check out how one group is turning trash into heavy metal and building robotic rockers with its own brand of Alga Rhythm and Blues. To find more hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community, visit connectamillionminds.com during the break.